Hello everybody, my name is Michael Levitt. I'm a professor of structural and computational biology at Stanford University in California. I'm in the Department of Structural Biology in Stanford Medical School. And I would like to tell you a little bit about my life, a little bit about my work on uh, COVID-19, and also some important advice for young people. Um, I've been an independent scientist since I was 20 years old. That's 53 years ago. And that's a very young age to become an independent scientist. But I think anybody who is a scientist can become independent young. And I think being independent young is very important. Uh, so let me just say a little bit about my own life. Uh, I started out working on the structure of proteins. And most of my work has been about how proteins m move how DNA moves. It's the way a molecule moves, something that is called a trajectory. Now, other things also move and have trajectories. An epidemic moves. The number of cases increases with time. The number of deaths increases with time. So every uh, epidemic, in some ways, has a trajectory. And uh, when I first heard about the outbreak in Wuhan uh, in the end of January, I basically started to look at the outbreak, I focused on it and quite quickly realized that like a dynamical object, it was slowing down. It wasn't accelerating, it was slowing down, it was coming to an end. This allowed me to feel really confident by the last week of February that things would be fine in Wuhan and indeed all of China. But meanwhile, the virus started up in Iran, then South, South Korea, Iran, Italy, and in fact, although most places in the world seem now to be past the virus, there is still new activity. Um, there's been a lot of interest in uh, China's big trading partners, countries like Germany and Europe and the United States. In the United States, uh, the virus finally does seem to be coming under control. I think after we see the results of the US election, everything will quieten down and we will know where the virus is going. Uh, in Europe, things started off very quickly, but by the middle of May, everything seemed to have stopped. But just today and yesterday, we're seeing some potentially disturbing news where there do seem to be some increase in the number of deaths uh, reported as being from COVID. It's not clear whether these are really extra deaths or deaths that would have happened anyway. We will know this in a, a, a few days' time. So now let me, in the uh, last part of my talk, say something about something that for me is my greatest passion. I have realized that the future belongs to young people. That might seem so obvious because we all think we think, and we also have lots of respect for old people, but old people are not what's driving science. The work I got the, my Nobel Prize for was done when I was 20 and 21. Later on, it didn't really matter. So we have to let young people do important science. And the way we have to do this is by giving them confidence in their independence. They should study with great people, but they should be independent from the beginning. They should have their ideas. They should be able to do their work. New ideas come from young people. The great advances in technology, the great founders of startup companies, whether it's Apple or Microsoft or Wishing where Alibaba all came from very young people. And it's important to remember that the young people are the people that are driving the future. Now, how do you encourage young people? Firstly, you let them be curious. Young people need to be curious. Every young person is naturally curious. You mustn't kill the curiosity. You must let the young people do what they want to do, to have ideas, and also it's very important to realize that if you're doing science, you are wrong. A good scientist is wrong 90% of the time, and a really good scientist is wrong 99% of the time. So this is a very important thing to remember. If you can't be wrong, you cannot do great science. If you are right all the time, you're not doing great science. You're doing easy science. Science is about discovering very, very difficult things and making those things available to everybody. Everybody can do this. China has a real advantage in this area. It's the country with more young people than any other country in the world, probably by a factor of four.
or five. That's a huge advantage. Those young people are the treasure of future China and should be regarded as such. Thank you very much.